Hello, 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 Charles here again, this time taking a look at Severed Steel. Something that caught my eye on Steam, clicked on the page and noticed it's quite a nice visual style and seems quite Matrix-like in terms of its gameplay. Story-wise, um, there's not too much to it, but it's told in quite a nice uh, comic book panel style. It tends to be about two to three frames, and that's it, but... It works for what the game is. You effectively wake up with an arm lost, hence the name Severed Steel, and you seem to be um, wanting vengeance. Not really anything to talk about here story-wise. It's a very minimalistic take, but for the type of game it is, it's absolutely fine. And with a little bit of art that is there, I do actually quite like it. I'm going to get one thing out of the way first. I do not care for the music. I am not a fan of electronic music. So the first thing I've done in this game was just turn it off. But I imagine if you're into electronic music, this is um, probably perfectly fine. And you might even quite like it. It's just not for me. Gameplay, however, is where I think this game shines. It's by no means flawless, but it it goes for something and mainly hits what it's attempting to go for. As someone going back through the original Matrix trilogy right now in preparation for Matrix 4, I really like that you, what you can do here. You can move one slow down time, kick, slide, and dive in the air. The campaign consists of very small short levels that take about three to five minutes to complete. Maybe a bit more occasionally, sometimes a bit less, but generally it's in a three to five minute ballpark. It often consists of an objective such as destroy a generator, then escape, or destroy multiple enemies, then escape, or destroy a console, then escape. It might sound very mundane and very generic, but given the, the stylized nature of the gameplay and the multiple difficulties, and generally how difficult the game is, it's actually much more fun than I expected. The tasks may be basic, but they are a genuine challenge. I kind of want to say maybe on the level of Ghost Runner, but I'm not sure if that's entirely accurate. But if you played Ghost Runner, I expect that kind of difficulty. That's the closest thing it reminds me of. And again, because of how much of a badass you can be, just slow mo all running, popping people in the head, jumping into a dash, a dive, sliding. Even though the tasks are quite mundane, it is really, really genuinely fun to play. It feels really good to wall run, pop a headshot, double jump, dive a bunch of bullets, and take as many enemies as possible. There is a decent amount of weapon variety. Even if the enemy variety is a little bit sparse, um, you'll find yourself running out of ammo quite a lot, so you'll either have to walk over a gun that an enemy's dropped to get ammo for the gun you've got, or you'll just have to pick up a new gun, which I do quite like. It makes you actually have to use the arsenal available rather than stick to a particular gun. The campaign, however, is a little bit slow. Very short. A bit shorter than it probably should be. It's about three hours tops, depending on how good or not you are at the game. There is also an arcade mode with multiple mutators, which is actually quite fun. It suggested you do complete the campaign beforehand, and while doing that does give you some nifty unlocks, you can just go straight into the arcade mode if you want to. You unlock levels in arcade mode by earning points. Your points from each successful level clear carry over, and the levels also have challenges to complete in addition to the mutators to help keep things a bit fresh. And while it will undoubtedly get a bit boring after a while, the mutators do help keep it fresh and keep you coming back wanting to try the same gameplay but just that little different flair. There is also a um, a level builder that's in beta and I believe there's Steam Workshop support so it's going to be very interesting to see what the community come up with. In the long run that actually may solve this game's main problem which is longevity. I imagine some people could create some really big sprawling challenging levels which would be quite fun to play with the game's movement. And the movement system for that matter is quite good. There, there is a momentum system, so sliding downstairs gains you a bit more momentum. Um, doing runs into dives and then into a slide gets you a bit more momentum as well. And if you want to go for top scores, which is what this game's really about, especially the arcade mode, if you want to go for top scores and clean runs, mastering that momentum system is key. And again, it's a nice way of adding a little bit of depth and trying to increase the game's longevity. On the visual side, the game does have a genuine visual flair. It has a very nice use of colours. It's very stylized even if the graphics are relatively very simple. But on the plus side of that, the LSS implementation is actually very good in this game. Because of the simple nature, AI reconstruction is 
incredibly easy and personally I'd say there's almost zero visual loss it's probably the least amount of visual quality loss I've seen in terms of IQ from a game with DLSS so that's a plus also if you have an RTX card it does have ray trace reflections which again they don't add too much but then saying that with the slow-mo and firing bullets it actually can be quite nice to watch I, I wouldn't say you lose much by having them off but you do also gain a little bit by having them on so it's a nice touch so overall i'd say severed steel is a great little indie it offers a bit of matrix like gunplay and movement it's relatively unique and tries to do something a bit different in a a period where indies seem to just be going after roguelikes or deck builders and just chasing current trends so i have a lot of respect for the devs for actually going for something a bit different and just doing something they wanted to do rather than making something that may make them more money my only concern is given how short the campaign is it's the price may be a little bit too steep i mean there is the rk mode there are mutators but at 17 pound 50 with 10 percent off or 26 dollars nine cents and canadian dollars and 22.49 usd i think it's a little bit steep it's not grossly overpriced but for me it should be about 10 to 20 percent cheaper in my opinion it's a minor nitpick but i think pricing is key and the devs may be being a little bit too optimistic here all that being said it's a very fun game and if you're in a matrix like mood love wall jumping sliding and slow mo and just want to feel like a genuine badass popping heads the game's great and it's definitely for you. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It's going to be very interesting to see how the community levels turn out. Because I think this could end up boosting this game quite significantly. Catch you again in my next review.